Hello everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia. I am a second year medical student at King's College London. Here at Medical Projects, we're creating videos all about the medical school application process and what being a medical student is actually like in the hopes of giving you your best chances of getting into your dream medical school. So for today's video, I thought we'd have a whistle stop tour through some of the things I think you should be considering when it comes to choosing which medical schools you want to put down on your UCAS application. Of course, getting into any medical school is a massive achievement, but there are actually quite a few differences between the medical schools in terms of how they assess you, what their course is like, and these are things to bear in mind. After all, you're gonna be at medical school for five or six years, so you want to make sure you're picking the university that is right for you. And so I'm hoping that some of the points that I mentioned in this video will assist you in making that decision. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first thing you're going to want to pay attention to is what are the entry requirements of the university and what admission test do they use? It's a bit of a boring one, but some universities will specify you need to get three A's, others will say A star AA, some won't allow resits, some will allow resits if you're a candidate that's retaking your A-level exams. And then of course for the admissions test, some will require the UCAT exam, some will require the BMAT exam, and obviously if you're applying as a graduate, they'll be using the GAMSAT exam. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. If you know your strengths lie in the UCAT exam, perhaps consider applying to more universities that require a high UCAT score. If you know you're better at revising and think the BMAT will suit you better, perhaps tailor your university choices towards that. The next thing you're going to want to consider when choosing where to go to medical school is the location. You're going to be there for five or six years, so you want to make sure it's in a location you feel comfortable with. So are you wanting to be close to home? Are you wanting to live in a big city or would you rather be somewhere that's a bit quieter? So speaking from experience, I did a degree before medicine in biomedical sciences and I studied at Bristol University. That university is a lot smaller and the city is a lot smaller than where I currently am, which is London studying medicine. And so perhaps if I was wanting a bit of a quieter lifestyle, I would head to Bristol over London. I know many people on my course live in London. So perhaps if you live in London, it might be worthwhile considering applying to the London medical schools because it means you might be able to live at home and save on that rent. I know it's not something that you don't necessarily think about as being the most important thing, but speaking from experience, the transport in Bristol was terrible and the transport in London is fantastic, although it is expensive. So that's definitely something to consider. And obviously with different locations comes different costs of living. So for example, rent in London is extortionate and transport in London while efficient is very expensive. So that's definitely something to factor in. The next thing you're going to want to consider is, do you want to study at a medical school that's based in a campus university or a non-campus university? Again, speaking from experience in Bristol, it was a non-campus university. And this definitely had its benefits because it felt like I could just enjoy the city. I wasn't in this student bubble so much. And so it was nice just to clear your headspace and kind of escape from that university life when you wanted to. I'm now at King's College London and I have my own campus called Guy's Campus. And that's basically comprised of a bunch of medical students, dentistry students, nursing students, and biomedical sciences students. And I really like being on a campus for the facilities and the ease of access to everything. Everything is pretty much all in one place. Libraries are there, you know, your teaching facilities are there, your classrooms are there, which I think is really convenient. However, I would say it is a bit of a bubble environment. And sometimes you just think, I want to get out of here. I'm sick of seeing university students and talking to everyone studying similar courses. I would say overall in my experience, I prefer the campus-based university better, but see what works for you. Go on open days and try and visit universities themselves. The next thing you're going to want to consider is does your medical school offer dissection or is it prosection? If you're wondering what this means, dissection is where you do a full body dissection. You're given a cadaver, which is a dead body to dissect throughout the year so that you can really learn anatomy hands-on. Whereas with prosection, the body parts have essentially already been dissected. So it's a case of you looking at it and you don't get to do that hands-on cutting aspect like you would in dissection. King's offers dissection and I can say it is one of the most incredible aspects of the course. It's such a unique opportunity that I'm probably never gonna get to do again in the same capacity. So I think of it as a real privilege to be able to learn a 
anatomy through dissection. But perhaps this isn't something that matters so much to you, but if you've got maybe a keen interest in anatomy, it might be worth applying to universities that offer dissection. The next thing you're going to want to consider is what the course type is actually like. Those are either going to be courses that are based around a traditional approach, an integrated approach, or a problem-based learning approach. If you're wondering what these mean, a traditional medical school basically has a curriculum where you do essentially three years of pre-clinical medicine. So that means you're learning the basic science behind medicine and you're not actually going out on placement at all. And then you do another two or three years of clinical medicine where you're based in a hospital. So essentially the first three years are similar to studying biomedical sciences and then you finally get put on placement. With an integrated course, as the name suggests, your curriculum is integrated with clinical placement. I personally think this is great because it gives you an opportunity to apply your knowledge as soon as you've learned it and see it in a clinical setting. And for me, I think that's going to make me learn a lot more efficiently. And finally, some medical schools prefer to adopt a problem-based learning approach. So I know this is something that Manchester uses heavily. This is basically where you're in small groups and you're given a problem regarding a clinical scenario and you're expected to work together and use a lot of self-studying to decipher what is wrong with the patient. If you like to work in teams and also relish the opportunity to have some independent study, I think this is probably going to be a really good course type for you. The next thing you're going to want to consider is the length of the course. Now, obviously everyone knows a medical course is actually really long anyways. It's five years minimum, which can be extended to a six year course if you do a master's or an integrated BSc. Now, some universities will say that their medical course is five years with the opportunity to intercalate if you would like to. Other universities will say you have to intercalate and do a BSc and so the course is six years minimum. This is something that I know Kings now does and is also something that I know Edinburgh does. So this will be something to consider Consider, you know, for example, if you know I'm definitely not going to intercalate, I already am dreading the thought of five years, I want to be out there as soon as possible, perhaps don't go to a medical school that forces you to intercalate. Now the final thing I think you should be considering when picking a medical school is how are you going to be assessed? For example, again, speaking from experience at King's College London, we don't have any short answer papers, we simply have multiple choice papers and our university makes use of progress tests very often. We don't seem to have as much coursework as some other medical schools have, although we have a portfolio that we have to complete each year. Other medical schools will use a lot more continual assessment and they might adopt some short answer papers. So definitely see what kind of examination style suits you if you want to be examined frequently or if you think actually I find exams really stressful, perhaps apply to a medical school that doesn't rely so much on continual assessment. So those are the main things I think you should be considering when it comes to picking a medical school. I hope this helped you out and gave you an insight into some of the important factors that you need to consider when choosing a school. If you have any other things that you think I've missed which are of importance, please do leave them in the comments below and if you have any further video suggestions, please also leave those in the comments below. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe to Medical Projects to make sure that you get updates when we release new videos and to get further support with your medical school application. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.